everyone welcome back to my channel Carol here at Oak House Journals um I thought yesterday <laughs> that it was about time that I started to crack on with my own Christmas journal um everybody else seems to be well underway with theirs and I haven't even started mine so I dug out the kit that I'd chosen this year to use for my um my own um, Christmas journal and the verdict is still out or the jury is still out on whether or not I'm going to make a Christmas journal or I'm going to make a um, December daily Christmas planner but this is the kit I chose as soon as I saw it and it's another chapter one kit um, and I, I I offer no apologies for choosing chapter one again because I have to say I just I do love the kits that um, the girls put together um, and this kit is the snowy Christmas garden digital kit and I love it I didn't want to do a journal that was going to be the traditional reds and greens um, I wanted something that was going to be more snowy wintry um, and evoke that feeling um, and these were just the perfect colours for that. Um, there is some red and green in it um, but I wanted soft feminine pastel shades but still Christmassy and just look at these papers. I mean they're just absolutely stunning. Oh this one I've printed out two to a page because um, anybody that knows me and my journals, uh, the journals that I make, I tend to make smaller ones so this I wanted to see what the image would look like reduced down and this is just gorgeous and if you reduced it down even further it would make the most stunning journaling card. This one was so pretty. It's got tiny mice on it, holly, Christmas trees, stocking, candy canes, just everything evocative of Christmas. I absolutely love that. And then, as I say, it does have some greens and reds in, but this is so soft and delicate and um, toned down that it would work perfectly in the journal that I have in mind. But even though I wanted these blue colours... Um, to evoke the feeling of, of snow and ice and wintry. Um, I still wanted the festive side of things, so I still wanted the touches of red. This is um, the envelope in the kit. There's a journaling card there, um, and I love these. You've heard me say it before. I love anything that gives me little extra elements like this because obviously you can use them as your stamp on your envelope you can use them as focal points on your tags and pockets but also you can use them as um, little charms or page tabs so I mean they're they're just ideal and I, I love anything that gives me those little stamps or extra embellishments these are the tags and pockets in the kit beautiful lovely love that red cardinal and some more sorry I'm just nudging what I've got off to the side of me here um, beautiful belly bands and again some little um, cards here that you can use for layering up which are ideal and this is one of the um, fawn pages just love that this one snowflakes looks like a, a snowstorm doesn't it it's lovely this is one of the collage pages. This is the, um, the fawny collage page. And again, you can chop out these and use them for layering up. You can use them for mini tags where, you know, if you pick out ones that have got the images on. Then here you've got a couple of journaling cards. I mean, just look at that snowman. That's lovely. I mean, this this actual kit couldn't have been more perfect for what I had in mind this year for my uh, Christmas journal. A couple of mini tags there, but you could layer that one on top of a bigger one um, and so that you've got a double layered tag. And then these beautiful labels here that, again, you could use for layering, layering up what I plan to. And this image, I've never seen anything like this done before in a Christmas journal. And I just think that would make a lovely um, focal image on a page I just really like like that and then this is another one of the collage pages but this time it's more in the blues and pinks as you can see and then this is a pink background page and then 
a red, um, not a red background page, another pink background page. So, as I say, I fell in love with this kit and I can't wait to get playing with it. But the Snowy Christmas Garden kit um, has two other complementary kits that go with it. There is um, an X Snowy Winter Gardens Extra Kit, which I also bought. And it is seed packets. You get labels that go on the seed packets, like so. You get some oval ones there with some um, foliage on. You get some plain ones. And I, whenever I get a kit, I, I look out for items in the kit that I can use not for what the kit is intended for. So this is a very much a Christmas-themed kit. But things like this and this and this I can use in, in other um, themed journals. And then these are the little discs. Now you get oodles of these. Little tiny images of a robin on a vase, a snowflake. Uh, what else have we got? Let me just try and move some to one side for you. A uh, tiny little mouse. So there's oodles of these. And these, I presume, would be the closure um, tabs for the back of the seed packets. Now these again are something that I look out for because these are ready-made charms for you. Um, all you need to do is punch a hole in the top and put a jump ring through it and you've got your charm um, for hanging off a tag or off the side of a page. Um, <laughs> I'm throwing them all over the place here. Um, you can use them obviously as as little embellishments dotted around your your journal as well so anything like this i love and these are the seed packets now you get 12 and as you can see i've cut them out and i've started folding some i mean the images are as gorgeous and obviously as complimentary as it goes for um as you can get rather um for the actual kit um main kit itself um, with the journal pages but I just now the reason I bought this kit is again the versatility because you don't have to use these as seed packets um, you could chop out the image there and use it as um, a pocket or a tuck spot you could make up your um, seed packet like I did with the um, shabby florals um, shabby purple florals kit and chop this off the top use this side piece as your hinge and then you've got a built-in um, flap um, or flip out for your journals or you could just use it as a pocket itself and chop it down you can have a short pocket or leave it tall and you've got um, a taller pocket you could also use these as journaling cards um, you could use them again as I did in that shabby purples floral kit as the cover for a little mini journal um, the little one that I made with that um, previous in that previous video was exactly one of these seed packets I just chopped the hinges off it and the top flap there and then folded it in half and then this piece here and this piece here became the cover to my little mini mini journal um, with that one I did print off two to a page so I got a smaller size but you know this would make such a little a nice little handbag size um, mini journal but that being said you get um, 12 seed packets in the extra kit plus those labels and you also get a sheet of these um, and these are numbers which number from 1 to 25 now this really is what gave me the inspiration now you can use these obviously in your journal if you were doing a say a daily planner a journal um, a Christmas December daily planner and you could put one of these on each of your page to denote what what the date is um, and as I said the jury is out for me at the moment whether I'm going to make a December daily planner or make a journal um, so when I saw these I thought that's ideal 
But you've also got these that you can embellish on your tags and on your pages as well. You can use them as, as tuck spots, things like that. Um, but what really gave me the inspiration was I am going to use these seed packets and these and I'm going to decorate the seed packets with an eyelet and one of, the dis one of these discs in the corner and I'm going to make an advent calendar. Um, and it's just a very quick and easy way to make an advent calendar. And as I said, you get 12 different seed pockets in the kit. So I'm just going to print, print out two of the kits and um, make them up. And I've then got my, my seed packets um, for my advent calendar. So that is my idea. And as you can see, I've started, I've chopped them all out and I've started folding a few. And that is what I plan to do using this kit. As well as when I make my journal, I will probably use some of these as journaling cards or additional tuck spots, as I said. Um, and then the other thing, um, the other complimentary kit is this one which is the snowy christmas garden fussy cut baubles kit now i have to say i was in two minds about downloading this because i thought mm, what could i use it for um as i said i want to get value for money out of the digi kits that i buy and <laughs> i did have one or two nice ideas that inspired me enough to think that this was worth downloading and really <laughs> all that preamble was a long-winded way of getting to the, the star attraction of the video I'm afraid but let me quickly show you the the um, this fussy cut bauble kit so you get these lovely um, different shaped bauble images and bows and then you get these and I have to say this one I just love that little mouse, just absolutely adore it. So you get these two large ones and then these two sets of images are produced in a smaller size on a single sheet. And for me, that's ideal because, as I say, I work with smaller size journals. So anything that saves me having to um, reduce or um adjust the size is is wonderful now the first thing I thought that came to mind for using these baubles was that I thought I could use them cut them out back them with tea stained or coffee stained paper and use them inside my journal as um, journaling cards so this is one from this one as you can see it's that one I chopped it out, I put an eyelet in the top, a gold colour eyelet in the top. I went round the, or I, I backed it with tea stained paper. I went round the outside um, with a glue pen and I used some glitter and then I coated it all when that was dry with some glossy accents and sprinkled more glitter on top. And as you can see, I've popped on some tiny little stars out of my stash. Now I know somebody, oh, and for, for the ribbon, I've used just some of that fine ribbon that came in that packaging that I mentioned in my embroidered envelopes. I used a little bit of this on the embroidered envelope and this was what was left over so I thought ideal and then this is some of that stretch elastic and um, so that's that's that now I would just fix that into my journal now let me I have a page off to one side here that I have just printed off double um, two to a page now I would just have that this this is a little bit long because this I could hang on a Christmas tree but this I would have in my journal like so probably through an eyelet or tied with a um, and tied with a bow at the top and then just have it on my page to flip over and have as um, a journaling spot but also as a point of interest 
on my page like so. Now let me show you quickly because I know people are going to ask. These are the glue pens that I use um, for doing that sort of edging um, and as you can see that's the end to the glue pen. I think you'll all have seen these quickie glue pens. Um, they wear the glue when you first put the glue on your project, it's blue, and then as it dries, it goes um, transparent. So you can actually see where you've put your glue. And then the glitter I've used is the Ranger Distress Glitter, and this one is the Clear Rock Candy, and it's lovely. It's lovely and fine. But another good one to use, um, I find, for this sort of thing, is the uh, Deco Arts Glamour Dust and this is just the crystal clear one and again very very fine um, this is probably even finer than the distress glitter um, Tim Holtz range of distress glitter but both of them are equally lovely for, for all the projects that I'm about to show you I used um, the distress and then if you didn't have the glitter or you're not a glitter girl you could perhaps use liquid pearl or stickles now this is a dimensional um iridescent type of paint um and it's really lovely and these two that i have are exactly the same even though they're in different bottles um and they are white opal so they've got a nice little iridescent um, as I say, colour to them and would work equally as well for round the edges if you are not a glitter type of girl. Um, and then, as I said, I just use glossy accents on the top. So that was my first idea to use these throughout my journal as journaling cards. Um, the other thing I thought was I could use one of them to make a bookmark. And this is the one that I've made for my bookmark. And again, it's this one here. And when you, again, I put an eyelet in the top. I've threaded through some velvet. And because velvet can be quite thick, um, I've just used a bit of um, Fabri-Tac, fabric glue, to glue the velvet together at the back there. You could stitch it, but um, I didn't want to. I just used uh, the glue. And then I put a little organza bow on the top. Now, because velvet can be quite thick, um, I didn't want to back this. I've, I've, or double side it, like so, because it would make it too thick in my journal. So I've left it single thickness. But if you didn't want to use this, you could use um, a ribbon or a piece of sari silk, a piece of lace even, if you want. Um, organza ribbon is ideal because that's so fine. And again, I backed this one with tea-stained paper. Um, this one, I did the same thing, glued the edges, bit of glitter, and then I put these little stars from my stash. But this time I didn't put any glossy accents on the top. And actually, I think that looks quite, quite pretty. I like that, and I certainly love it on this long piece of velvet ribbon. I mean, I haven't chopped this. This is a massive piece because I'm not sure um, how long I want it to be when it's in my journal. So that was one idea. The other idea I had was to use the baubles as tuck spots. So on this page, all I've done, again, is taken this image and I've glued it at one side here and one side um, or at the bottom there. I didn't put an eyelet in it. I used one of the little bows and cut that out and just glued it on the top. And that gives me a nice little tuck spot there like that on my page. Now, you can either use, um, obviously, one of the journaling cards or tags from the kit or let me take these off and put them to one side you could actually use another one of the baubles and you could layer it up behind like so and have one as a tuck spot and one as a journaling card and do that idea let me just bring the camera down a little bit because I feel like you're all a million miles away actually and I hope you can there, hope that's not making you feel too. There you go, it just steady itself. 
So, as I say, you can use one of the baubles as a tuck spot and the other one as a journaling card. So that's kind of an idea that I thought of. Another idea I thought was that you could use one of the baubles, the images, such as this one. You could take a circular punch and this this one is an old one. This is a, a 1.5 um, inch circle punch and you could chop out your one of the images and you could use these for dangles if you wanted you could use these as um, closures on your seed packets if you prefer um, you could use them as page tabs you could use them as um, focal points or images on your pockets or your tuck spots or you could use these as little journaling cards and what I did here was I just chopped out these bows from the kit. I've glued each of the bottom um, two points of the bow. And I just think that makes a really cute tuck spot. Um, so you could do that and have that uh, on your page. And when I did that, I then <laughs> got carried away and thinking what else I could do with these. Um, so here's another one that I've cut out. And what I thought was that I could put it at the top of my page like so. And I could just leave it as decoration and it just brings out the pop of colour on my page. Or, and what I think I will do, is I will layer up some lace behind here and have a lace feature dangling down and maybe put a little half pearl in the centre of my bow. Um, I think my bow's upside down, actually. Yes, it is. Um, and do that and, and have that as a, as a feature. Um, I mean, it would look equally nice across the top of the, the page, like so, if you take that away. Um, or the other idea I had was if you cut out two of these, you could straddle it over the edge of the side of your page. And then you've got, if I can just hold that in place, if it's going to hold. If you straddle it, one bow on one side of the page and one on the other side, you can use these as page tabs, which I thought would be really nice. And also if you have them poking out enough off the side of your page you could punch a hole and you could have um christmas charms hanging off and that's certainly what i'm going to be doing with with mine because actually when i got playing with these bows i really liked the idea of using them as little tuck spots i certainly like the idea of having a lace embellishment at the top there um, and tabs so I will be using these and in the in this kit that I've got here you've got yellow gold and um, red ones and you could just leave them plain or you if you're a glitter girl again you could use glitter or glossy accents but actually I just really like it soft and delicate like that and as I say if you take that one away um, you get these little colors popping further down the down the page and then, just before I go, oh, look, I think <laughs> it's a big bow tie on that one. Um, I mean, you could do that sort of thing if you wanted a different shape um, bauble with the mouse image on it. Um, but what I did find is a happy accident. These make great tuck spots, as I say, for things like the mouse. But look at this. If you put one of these with the pointy ends or one like that with the pointy end. Look, that makes a perfect, absolutely perfect tuck spot um, for your bauble to sit in. And obviously if you didn't, you know, you could use that, as I say, for your, your journaling card or whatever. Um, if you didn't want that poking off the bottom of your page, you could obviously move it up. But <laughs> I just thought that was a, a nice happy accident that I spotted there. Um, as I was as I was playing so there's some ideas for those bits now um, I also was trying to figure out other things that I could do with the baubles um, but moving away from journals so you have the idea of the bookmark and the journaling card then I thought they would make 
nice little decorations for on a tree. Um, so I took another one of the smaller baubles and I gave it the same treatment with the glue and the glitter and the little stars and again an eyelet at the top and there's just enough room to get a four millimeter eyelet um, at the top if you're very careful how you you punch um, on this side I've put silver stars and on this side gold stars and then I've just put as you can see um, a little silver snowflake and that would look pretty on a Christmas tree I thought or you could use these as um, tags for your Christmas presents tie them round your um, presents or on your gift bags and if you put tea stain paper on the back you could write your to and from and your Christmas message that was another idea I thought um, and certainly with the big ones they really do lend themselves for doing that I'm just going to move that to one side because this is all going to get a little bit tricky in a minute. Then I decided I could make dimensional ones. So these, I just printed out three images of the bauble. I cut off the loop bit at the top um, and I just folded them in half and glued them together to make these three fins if you will now i know you can do these everybody's seen these and you know you you know we did these as kids didn't we and you do them with your grandkids um so everybody's familiar with these so you just trap a piece of ribbon at the top and this one i've just put three bows in the three um little sections but you can use as many of these images and create as many of these fins as you want. I know that there is a design that you can do where you cut halfway down and you just slot your pieces in. Um, I didn't want to go to that effort. I just wanted to have a go at, at seeing what they would look like um, dimensionalized like this. So this one, I've just put a bit of green ribbon through the top, um, just trapped it between the pieces as I glued them together and then gave it the um, glossy accents and glitter treatment so there's that one then I wanted to see what one of the um, long dangle ones looked like and this was a, just a very simple one all I did with this one was exactly the same treatment but I've just put three little bows in the sections and I picked up the ribbon from the bow on of the image with some glossy accents but really I think I will put some more glossy accents on these berries on that image but very and again I didn't put any bows on the top of this one just very very simple ideas but I mean these would be so fun to make and pop on the Christmas tree and then I couldn't resist doing one with the snowman and this one I put as you can see a jump ring and a silver snowflake on the bottom I use glossy accents on my snowman and then I used here I used a product called fluff it um, please don't ask me where I got it from I've had it in my stash for absolutely ages and when it dries it's supposed to fluff up like snow but obviously I've had it for so long it doesn't fluff up anymore but it's still given me some dimension at the bottom to look like snow and again glitter and glossy acts um glue and glitter round the sides and then this one I put a jump ring in the top organza bows and some organza ribbon like so so that was that idea um, and then I had another idea now we have a we have a tradition in our household at Christmas and we have glass baubles that um, have the names of friends and family in them and our tradition is that when people come and visit us at Christmas and we swap presents we give them their bauble and they hang it on our Christmas tree and it's something we've done for many years and there are times when friends can't come uh, to the house around Christmas time or you've lost family members and when 
when we unwrap our Christmas um, decorations and we come across those baubles, then we just, obviously it brings that person to mind um, that you might have lost or that you're not seeing because they can't get to visit. And it just gives you a little pause, a little bit of happy memory. Um, so we have done that for absolutely years and we have um, these glass baubles that again had for years but they open up like so I have to be careful because these are a glass they open up and they have inside them a lace star and then we just have people's names on them that we love dearly and all I did was I put in just a white feather in the bottom and as I say these hang on our tree so there's this one for Joan and this is, I've got another couple just to one side here. And this one is for my, my mum, as you can see. I love these baubles. I absolutely love them. They're my treasures. Um, and then we have this one for a lovely friend. And they're not all the same, um, these baubles because we do have this is a modern version of one of these baubles and I got this from Next a couple of years ago so um, if you have Next in your neck of the woods we certainly have it here in the UK um, take a look because they do have these from time to time and as you can see this one has a glass moulding at the top and this one has more of the um, usual Christmas hanger at the top and then this is another another little bauble that we will be hanging on our tree so as I say these are what we we have here at home and we use every year um, now if you don't want to use a feather in the bottom you can get polystyrene um, balls that you can use these are some like little felt balls now you could put these in the bottom um, or you can get I think it's called angels tears which is like some iridescent strips and then this is called, this is some felt that is called Santa's beard. I made some gnomes a couple of years back and um, uh, that was left over. So you could use stuff like that. Um, but for the ones we have here at home, we just have feathers. Now, it was these that gave me the idea for what I wanted to do next. And um, I took the images again and I made some of these little baubles now these are I'll show you this one in more detail in just one second let me just move these to one side I'm a bit nervous because as I said they are glass and they get a little bit fragile so there we go these baubles are these now they came from the range they are Doe craft create Christmas and they are fill your own plastic baubles and you get four in a pack and they were $1.99 and I know that they have them in um, the UK range now in, in the shops because I only got those um, last week and if I open them out if I take one out for you this is what the bauble looks like it is plastic and you get a piece of organza ribbon with it and these just twist slightly oops a daisy she said and open up like that so I thought that I could do the same thing with my kit that I've got from um, chapter one so I printed off one of the baubles and I cut um, cut across the top um, so that the top of the bauble the neck if you will and the loop um, were cut off and I cut off, um, I cut out two of the images and I just glued them back to back. And before I sandwiched them together, I put a piece of cotton through it and I doubled it up like so. So there is a whole piece of cotton running all the way through it. And I used the top piece of cotton to wrap round the neck of the plastic bauble which is this bit so what I did was uh, I cut out my disc I sandwiched my cotton between it 
the cotton that was hanging out the bottom I just held with my thumb at the bottom here and the one at the top I just wrapped around the neck there until it was taut and then trapped the excess with my finger at the back and then I just closed up my bauble and the thread is so fine that it traps perfectly inside and holds the bauble, um, bauble image in place inside. Now as you can see there is if I can hold that up to the camera, there is an angel charm inside. And all I did with that was I threaded my cotton from the bauble through the charm before I wrapped it round the neck of the bauble. And this is the bottom bit here. I don't need to leave those threads there. I just left them there so that you could see how I'd done it. But now that I've done it um, and I'm showing you on video, I will just trim those off and I know that it will hold that bauble, um, that bauble image securely in place because there's enough left in there trapped. I also, as you can see, put in a few stars because on this image, um, as you can see, there's branches and stars. And I gave these the same, this one, the same treatment as I gave all of these. I just glued round the edge. In fact, it's exactly the same um, bauble image. I glued round the edge, um, put my glitter on, and then I put glossy accents on this one and sprinkled it. So that's why this image in the bauble, if I can show you that, is slightly darker than that image. It's not because it's inside the bauble, it's because it's got glossy, glossy accents and glitter on it. So that's one that I made. And then I made, I'm bringing in all my coffee, <laughs> I'm bringing in all my coffee cups here to, to kind of support them. This is that darling little mouse image. Um, so I did exactly the same treatment and as you can see, there's my little tail of cotton there, just white cotton. And again, glitter around the edge, glossy accents all over my mouse and the lovely little berries he's eating. Oh, he's just so cute, this image. Um, and then on the other side, whoops a daisy. You see, they will move inside. They're designed to do that. Um, but when they're hanging up on, on the tree, um, obviously they won't move around so much. It's just because um, I'm moving them in my hand but I'm not sure if you can pick up, but I just had a little charm, a little charm of some red bells and some foliage. So I just threaded that through the top. I used some of that stretch elastic on this red gross grain ribbon. And that's that little one. And then obviously I couldn't stop there. I still had to carry on playing. So let me bring in my third one. Let's pop, I just move that one slightly. In fact, I'll move that one to one side and put this one in the middle. This one, I wanted to see what it would look like if I used um, glossy accents and glitter on the top. And I have to say, I probably would use a chunkier glitter. I would probably use something like the um, Rock Candy Distress Glitter. But they do... Um, they do one or ranger do one that's chunkier than this now i probably will go over this and use that because i don't think this one it looks like it's just splurged on there it, it could be better i mean when the when the light is on it does pick up and glitter but it could be better now this is again another one of the lovely bauble images um, and it was a wreath i glossy accented the poinsettias on the actual wreath um, image and then um, I put these little decorative wreaths on top that again were in my stash. So I kind of thought that that would give me plenty to keep me going outside of journaling to use that kit for and as I say I quite like the fact that I can get um, quite a few ideas and uses out of any of the digi kits that that I buy and um, I certainly think there's loads on this one and I have to say I absolutely love um, the journal pages um, in this kit and I, I'm gonna have a lovely time so um, I will show you the uh, my journal when it's finished 
but um, I'm not rushing to finish it. It's This is one for my own personal use. So I'm just going to take my time and enjoy making it. And if it gets finished in time for Christmas, then great. And if it doesn't, well, I'm, I'm not bothered. I will just savour the pleasure of using this, um, this digi kit. So thank you so much, everybody, for letting me share some of my ideas with you. And now I'm going to get on and get cracking and make my Christmas journal because, as I say, Christmas will be here by the time I'm even started on it at this rate. So thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for sharing a bit of your Sunday with me. And I hope you all had a fabulous weekend. Take care. Have a good week ahead. Bye now.